Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer quick board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is 3,000 Scoundrels by Unexpected Games. This is a two to four player game that involves bluffing and treachery. Your objective is to gather scoundrels. There are a total of 3,000 combinations of scoundrels in this game, so you're going to be getting different types of uh, characters and their traits along with their different types of jobs, and you'll be attaching them like a annoying dog, etc, etc. And you are going to be placing them down onto your board, utilizing their abilities. And why? Well, because you are going to want to go to the depot, the estate, and the laboratory to gather safes. Safes will provide victory points, and if you have the most after two or three days, you are going to be the winner of the game. Now, I'm going to explain the basic idea of how this game is played, and what you need to do to set the game up, and then we'll go into my review. We have a quick one, one a day where we just kind of discuss what I thought about the game. Setting the game up is pretty simple. You'll take the main game board, and you will set in front of all players. You'll You'll place your victory points marker on the zero area, and then you're going to place a number of cards in the depot, estate, and laboratory, different colors, setting one aside. You're going to place one of each of your, I guess, betting tokens in the sheriff's jail, and then you're going to set the starting characters and their starter jobs slash roles or traits up, and then based on the number of players, you'll have a certain number of these guys that you're going to position. And then after that, each player is going to get a player board for bucks, a bunch of these tokens that they'll be using throughout the game, a deck of seven cards, and if you're playing with the more advanced variant of the game, you'll have this bonus ability slash uh, passive ability that you can use when playing a six number, and you'll set it down. And that's pretty much all you need for the setup for the game. There is different variants, there are ways you can play longer games, and uh, the main thing you're going to need to know is all on this player reference card. But that's the setup, how the game is played. So over a number of rounds, either two or three, you are going to be doing these steps. You will plan, so you'll draw four cards from your poker deck, and the poker deck cards are going to be one through uh, six, I believe. Yeah, I know there's seven total cards. Oh, and an ace. So zero, ace, two, three, four, five, and six. You'll shuffle these guys up, and you're going to have four of these guys here. And you're going to be placing down all of them, and you'll be placing down them on the bottom of your board. So if I take my board here, and you look at it, you will see an ace through six. So you can place any one of your cards face down here. And when you do, players can decide whether or not you're telling the truth, because you can choose to lie. Regardless of whether you lie or not, you'll get that ability. And the ability can be uh, scouting a safe from one of the different locations, or gaining money, or you can just simply steal a safe. And finally, the sixth slot is either nothing, or it's going to be based on what your scoundrel do, scoundrels do, or if you have the bonus abilities. And like I said, when you place down, it doesn't matter what your card says. It could be a, a zero card, you can put it on a three. You will get the ability and trigger all your cards. But because you're lying and people can go ahead and find you out, they can place their little tokens, these little guys here. And if they place them on correctly, so if you're bluffing and they know you're bluffing and they place them down, you will lose a victory point and they will gain a victory point. And each player that places it down is going to gain one victory point, in which case you can lose points. And so you have to be careful when you're choosing to bluff in the game. But like I said, either way, you'll get to do whatever the ability is. After you place this down and do your ability and check to see if you have any um, abilities from your scoundrels that you've gathered throughout the game, then you are going to be able to either hire a scoundrel or you can go ahead and use the sheriff's office. Using the sheriff's office is easy. You gain two victory or two not victory points, I wish, two money. Or you can spend two money to free your henchmen, or you can spend four to free two. And henchmen are these little betting tokens you'll be using. And finally, uh, if it's the final day only, you can spend $12 and you can steal a safe from any site that you would like. Money's worth nothing in the game, so you might as well use it or lose it. So these characters here, you can also choose to buy them instead of going to the office. And it's going to have a value on the very far right hand side. It's based on dollars. So this guy here, he's got $8. So he's going to be very expensive, but he'll give you a unique ability and how you can use it. So in this case here, it's when he's hired, use it twice, and then discard from the saloon. The saloon is like your little area here. Spend $2 to steal a safe from a site. It's really good. Uh, or other guys might say something like this one here. If you place a 2 or a 3 card, you can send an opponent's henchman or betting token to jail, which is over here, uh, even if it's on a card. And some of these guys will work differently. Some of them will allow you to use them when you activate a certain card on your board based on how you choose to place. You can always rearrange placement when you get a new guy. And after you've purchased one of these guys here or use the sheriff's office, you're going to put a new character down. If you bought one here, you'll just simply replace the empty space. And if you did the sheriff's office, you'll take one off here. You'll switch it 
take one of the traits and jobs and slide this guy on in here. If I can, if I can slide it in, ah, oh, it's on this side. And this is going to be a way to give you unique combinations of scoundrels. Bam, you put it down, and now you've got an annoying dog that you can buy. After you have placed and used the abilities in any order that you'd like, you can use the scoundrel abilities first, you can choose to use the card ability, and then you've hired a scoundrel or you've went to the sheriff's office and done one thing, then you're going to go ahead and pass. And the next player will go, next and next. And you'll go through this four times. After you do this four times, then you're going to rinse and repeat the round. You'll be taking your deck of cards, shuffling them, putting them on the bottom of your deck, drawing four more cards, meaning one of your old ones will come to your hand, and playing this all over again. And your objective is, like I said, to steal safes. Each of the areas has different values of safes, more expensive ones in the lab, but more difficult to get the better ones. Whereas the depot is gonna have a range of three to five, the lab will have a range of two to seven. So more risk, more reward type of a thing. What's also cool about this game too is scouting safes. You can take your little markers and place them on safe locations. And when somebody takes that safe with that marker, if the marker matches the safe, you score an extra point for each marker that does. So if I put a five on a five, I can get six points at the end of the game for having that safe. And also what's really cool about it too is you can lie. You can put a two on a seven so that people don't want to take it because you might not be able to take and mark a safe on the same turn. So to keep prying eyes away from that safe that you want to keep, you can put it down there. But people might think the double cross is, is fixed and might try and take that safe as well. Uh, regardless though, each day or each round, you're only going to be able to get one safe. And that's going to tally up to your total victory points at the end of the game. So maybe you have a five, five and a four, 14 points. You can have victory points based on the scoundrels that you have. And um, there's also one more way you can have victory points in this game. Oh, oh whenever you make bluffs or whatnot based on the cards and uh, placing your little your little guys here, your little henchmen, you can score points going up this track as well. And that's basically the idea of the game. So go those two or three days, depending on if you're playing the easy mode or the more complicated mode of the game, and whoever has the most points via safes, via your different scoundrels, and how you used your henchmen is the winner of the game 3000 Scoundrels. Let's talk about it. First and foremost, this is a bluffing and deduction game. You are utilizing your wits to buy new scoundrels with unique abilities and to place down cards in their proper slots or their improper slots to gain the ability and the ability of the scoundrels that you're using. You want to check and make sure that opponents most likely are doing the correct actions based on how they're playing. So if they put down a three and gain some money and a four and gain some money, and then they used a six, which normally is bad, but some for some reason they have a bunch of sixes on their board and they just used one last turn. And so they use all their active abilities again. Oh, I, I drew this again, even though I had it last round. You want to call people on bluffs. In this game, calling people on bluffs is big. Scoring victory points is important because in this game, it is always a razor edge finish. It's very, very likely that you'll probably get maybe three or maybe four points if you're really, really lucky with your henchmen. You can score anywhere between two and seven points with these safes here. And if you're going only two rounds or two days, then the max points you can get from just this area over here is going to be a total of 13. So it's a very low point scoring game. So every point counts. Additionally, scoundrels are going to give you ways to gain points as well. I believe they're called reputation. And you can use them, and most of the time it'll make you discard them, but usually it's for a high value. And so getting reputation is very important in this game. Money is important to an extent because it'll allow you to get your betting tokens back if you lose them. If you bet improperly, they go to jail. Um, if you bet correctly, they'll come back to you and you'll score points. So having those tokens around is always important to do making sure that you always get at least one case is important. And if you don't, the max you can get is the amount of rounds that you are playing. So you can choose to wait longer, but the longer you wait, the less good crates are going to be there. The less good safes that you can pick up are gonna be there because people will find them and take them and keep them if they can. This game has a lot to offer, especially in replayability. There are so many unique cards and the ways in which they function. Now, it says 3,000, and that is technically correct, but for the most part, you'll know what the abilities do and how they function after a few games for, for almost all of the characters, uh, because the traits will be based on the stack of cards here, and a lot of them are just going to involve how you can use them and not really what they do, um, and maybe a benefit or two. And these guys here, the uh, 
the the jobs here these are what are actually what you're going to be using how they work so this one here i draw okay it's after you steal a safe and then it could be after you steal a safe you can discard this to gain five bucks or spend three dollars to steal an unused safe or lose reputation to steal a safe from a site etc etc so it's really just combinations of how to use these cards here and these are your main main go-to's but of course with better combinations as opposed to having to uh, only play it on a four or a six or maybe maybe as an as opposed to only playing it on an, a, a zero or a six a four or six is better or instead of it having to be a specific card maybe it's at the start of your turn which is also much better uh, you'll be able to use these guys more so finding what is the best type of combination is going to be most important and sometimes good combinations can come cheaper than um bad combinations you could have two really good cards that don't work very well together that are very expensive compared to one bad card and one good card that work together and are cheap and so you want to pick those up if you possibly can the artwork in this game is excellent this is feels like an old rundown saloon and you're a bunch of scoundrels going into different locations trying to steal their different uh safes you're, you're borrowing from the treasury so to speak and that is really really fun it feels good to take from here you always want to be careful when you take it's it's not about how many you can get but about the best quality that you can have. Because at the end of the game, everyone is gonna have safes equal to the number of days. It's very unlikely somebody won't get it because at worst case scenario, you have to force a bluff, you take a safe, and then you lose some points, but it's worth it because you can gain points overall. Uh, the, so the theme works very well in this game and the art is very complimentary to it as well. Mechanics are really great too. Having to determine when somebody is lying or stealing is great. This game has a lot of great qualities. Um, few negatives, I suppose, is it might be difficult to tell when people are bluffing, especially during the first round of play, and so you might want to save your specific henchmen to use when you know it's more likely that people are going to bluff. Uh, there's a bigger risk uh, to a person, uh, for a person to bluff than there is for you to put down your guy. But getting those guys back can be troublesome, it could cost you money, and you might want to use that money on other better things, potentially, based on what you have. Comboing is really cool as well, but if you're not really careful about how you place and where you place, you're going to have to start rearranging. Uh, if you get a bunk card that just because you think it's worth a lot of money, it might not be actually that good. You might rather get a card that's worth three or four and save your money to, ba to bail out your guys, and that card might be even better than the one that would cost six or maybe even seven just for an ability that doesn't work with what you're doing here. You have to know what your type of strategy is going into it, and hopefully the combinations come up. You might get a bad combination of cards that don't want to function well together, that's possible as well, or you just might get six different unique combinations. So there's kind of a randomness to the way the jobs and the traits work in this deck here. But I don't really see a whole lot of negative to this game. It's really, do you like a bluffing game? It's simple and short and sweet, and you understand how it's played over the course of one of the days, basically just playing a card, getting you to your abilities, choosing to do a thing down here, and then you're done. And you rinse and repeat that four times, that ends the round, and then four more times, and that ends the game. If you play the longer variant, which I suggest, it gives you more meat in those potatoes, which is good because you get to experience more of what the combinations that you can have for scoundrels do. You can start replacing them for better ones. There's no point to keeping them if you don't want to use them. You don't score more points with them unless they say so. And using these guys at the end is also important. You basically want to dump out in order to get all the reputation you can because reputation is all that matters in this game there's no bonus victory points that come from money or anything like that so you need to pay attention to that as well but yes overall 3000 scoundrels is a lovely game i think for the most part if you know what this type of game is and it's something that you think you would enjoy i would say that you are going to really enjoy it thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game 3000 scoundrels if you're interested in the game there's a link down below in the description where you can pick up the game you can also go to the website unfilteredgamer.com blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more all right guys subscribe hit that bell button notification to see more of our videos here join our live stream every sunday at 6 30 p.m pst to see us play games just like this one and for now that's all i got for you and as always i look forward to stealing the better safes from you next time